You're listening to The Peach Pit. I'm talking with Farhad Hossein from the band Schumann. Their new album, Memories and Intuition, comes out on September 10th. Farhad, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me and welcome to The Pit. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. I think the first episode, uh, first question I should have for you is pretty obvious. If you were in a Def Leppard tribute band, what <laughs> instrument would you play? Uh... Either either guitar or vocals, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be such a blast, wouldn't it? It, it would be pretty awesome. Uh, just curious uh, how you picked a Def Leppard. I was reading through, you said that Def Leppard is one of your earliest influences. Yeah, indeed. <laughs> so take me back. I like to know people's origin stories. What were your earliest influences? What was influencing you as a kid? How did you discover your passion for music? And also, you have a passion for art as well. Yeah, um, so... Uh, essentially, you know, growing up, you know, I was the youngest. Um, I have a, an older brother and older sister. So when they went off to school, uh, and this is before I went to kindergarten, um, I had time to kill. I couldn't really play with them. So I would just, you know, listen to the radio. Uh, and somehow I found a way to record my voice in one of those, you know, boom boxes, the sound blasters or whatever. Um, so I just kind of grew up on the radio. So uh, you know, hearing songs like, you know, Rock of Ages and, uh, you know, and just modern pop of the time. Um, I just started kind of making my own cassette tape recordings of me singing. Um, and this is like when I'm like three or four years old. Um, so I always kind of liked singing, uh, you know, fast forward a few years. Uh, the first band, you know, that I really got into, uh, just like we talked about earlier, was Def Leppard. Um and I, I think a lot of that 80s influence um, finds its way to the band now just because, you know, we're super melodic and we've got like these huge chorus uh, hooks. Um, and that, I think, is a direct uh, influence from that time. Um, anyway, so we got into Def Leppard. Uh, but I, when I started to actually pick up the, the guitar, uh, that's when it was Metallica was like the biggest thing for me. Um, and then I got into, uh, you know, the more progressive bands like Rush and Dream Theater, and that that opened up a whole flood of bands. Um, I, and I later got into more of the 70s prog stuff, like the Genesis and, yes, Pink Floyd, all that stuff. Um, but that pretty much sums up, uh, you know, my early experiences, I guess, growing up. It was, it's basically raised on radio, like the Journey album, I guess. <laughs> and so you started writing songs at a young age too, right? Yeah, I mean, I started writing songs, uh, you know, full songs by the time I was like seven or eight. I mean, they were pretty bad, but uh, like I knew what it's supposed to sound like in my head. It didn't quite translate on cassette, but yeah. I mean, that's before I ever played an instrument. I would just kind of hum the guitar parts um, and, and write lyrics, uh, but I never had the um, the ability to play any instrument, nor did I own an instrument until I was, you know, probably 14 or so. Oh, so I thought you had maybe started on keyboards before a guitar. Yeah, so I I had a Casio keyboard that I dabbled in, um, and I, I learned how to you know just kind of play triads and simple things like that. Uh, and it was only because I my parents wouldn't buy me a guitar, so that's the closest thing that I had. Um, so I, I dabbled with it here and there, uh, but I wouldn't really say I kind of I wouldn't say I was a keyboard player or anything like that. Far from. Uh, I revisited it after I I played guitar for a few years. <laughs> and so, and then in high school, you're 14 and you got your first guitar, right? Pretty much, yeah. And so then you started playing in bands? It was, yeah. I mean, I, I formed a band before I even had a guitar uh, and I was just borrowing other friends' guitars. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we I got a couple guys together and it was just like we, you know, when you're in high school, you find people uh, with similar music interests and you just kind of, you know, you form these bonds. Um, so I had that with a few guys and, you know, we were all into like Iron Maiden and Metallica and Queensryche and bands like that. Um, so we're like, we're going to start a band. None of us played an instrument, <laughs> but we kind of, you know, uh, learned together. Uh, and, you know, as the years went by, um, you know, actually developed some chops and learned how to play and write proper songs. And yeah, so I've been in bands, uh, you know, pretty much since ninth grade, uh, continuously until now. And some of those early band names are yours you get to still play with today, right? Yeah, that's true. Um, 
the initial guys, the initial group of guys that I met, um, I'm still in contact with, um, but we don't play together. But, you know, a few years after that, you know, that's when I met um, Jose, uh, our bass player. Um, I met Tyler Kim, our other guitar player in seventh grade. So we go back way before we played instruments. Um, so it's it's really cool having, you know, some of your best friends playing um, music because we have so many shared experiences and memories. Um, so that's definitely uh, a blessing because you don't have to worry about personalities and, and things like that. Cause you're pretty much compatible already. And there's so much more to share too. I mean, like it was really, uh, I don't know you guys personally, but watching the music video for memories into and intuition, it was just like, wow, it really shows that you guys have shared a lot of history together. And it's pretty cool to see that you can still spend that together. I want to get now in towards university because in university after that you you started something called Encompass, right? Yes, yeah, um, indeed. Oh wow, you really did your his, uh, your uh, research here. <laughs> um, yeah, I started a band, Encompass. Uh, Jose, our current bass player, was in that band. Uh, our live drummer Dunveer was also in that band. Uh, it was basically, I mean, it was very similar to what we're doing now. It was uh, like accessible, progressive rock. Uh, and we were together for a few years, opened for a bunch of great bands like Spock's Beard, um, you know, Camelot. We opened for um, just a, a bunch of bands, Sonata Artica, uh, Fate's Warning. Um, so it, it was a cool time. Um, and then, you know, we slowly dissolved uh, and then I um, formed another band uh, w- with another friend called um, N- named Navid, and uh, that band was called Iris Divine. Uh, and then I continued with them for a while, carried over the rhythm section from Encompass. Um, by that point, Jose had quit Encompass, so we had a guy named Brian. Uh, and then our current drummer, Dunveer, was also an Iris Divine, uh, along with a guy named Navid. Um, and we went off for a few years uh, until I left uh, and then started Schumann. So that's kind of a history of all the bands I've been in. <laughs> <laughs> well, it seemed like uh, you've been playing in this prog rock, prog metal style for so long. When you started Schumann, it was really just you trying to expand out and just do kind of like a side project, which became a solo project. And then slowly those things started coming back in. You couldn't get away from the fact that you're a prog guy at the end of the day and you couldn't run away from your own uh, influences, let's say. Yeah, it's it, it's funny because when I was in Iris Divine, we were like a progressive metal band, um, a, a heavier uh, prog kind of band, not really genty or anything like that, but definitely heavier, heavier than Schumann. Um, and towards the end of my time there, I just got really sick of the whole progressive thing because I had done it for so long uh, by that time. And I wanted to do something completely different. Um, and I didn't, I, I wasn't in a place where I could handle both uh, projects at the same time. So I just kind of split and said, I'm going to do my own thing. Um, and the songs that I wrote were completely, I mean, they weren't progressive at all. Um, they were very poppy. It was just, it, it was completely different. And I had an album's worth. Uh, but then I realized I wanted to play it live. Um, so when I got Jose and Tyler, um, to, to kind of join, um, I s- kind of started writing a little bit more and it started going back to that progressive stuff. And I was like, wait, okay, so I don't know if I can sustain myself writing this, this new material that I started writing. So I just pretty much canned that whole record, uh, and started over again. And it became this, you know, melodic prog thing again. Um, and then, so essentially that became the first album, um, stemming from a solo project. Yeah. It's sort of symbolic in a way of like having the name Schumann, I mean, a uh, uh, calm mind, peace of mind. It's also coming from your middle name, right. uh, being a Sanskrit word, being the name for the project. Also so symbolic of you really just trying to find your own, your own artistic self, really. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and the, the freedom that I have with this band is... Um, like we're all on the same page. So we feel like we can do anything. Like if we wanted to write in whatever genre, um, we don't stop ourselves. You know, we're pretty open to, you know, if it just sounds good, if we feel good playing it, we would include it. And I think that's why there's such a variety, uh, between the songs on, on the, especially on this new record. Um, you know, some stuff is just really poppy and I'm sure like the prog heads are going to hate us for it. (laughs) Whereas there's some parts that are, you know, quite, you know, technical and, you know, traditional progressive metal. 
Um, so that that's a great thing about this because it started with the solo. Um, it started with that solo background um, that kind of carried over where where the other guys are OK with me experimenting with whatever. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit more about the writing process, because you mentioned that sometimes you like to write just with the drums first. You might come up with a drum groove and then start adding things to it later. I think that's such a cool approach. Do you feel like you just like to focus on rhythm a lot sometimes? Yeah. So before I played guitar, I mean, I really wanted to play drums. That was like what I really wanted to do. But there was no way my parents were going to buy me a drum set. Right. Um, So... um, Anytime I listen to music, I, I usually gravitate towards the rhythmic elements of it uh, and how like the bass and the drums are tied together. I was always fascinated by that. So you can imagine when I when I you know discovered Rush, I was just completely blown away because obviously Neil was a killer drummer, uh, and the way Getty and Neil interplay with each other it was just out of this world. Um, so when I when it comes to songwriting, some, you know, I'm not a drummer by any means, but sometimes I'll get behind the kick because I have a, a studio in my house uh, and I'll just make up some random drum grooves and I'll track it. And usually that'll trigger melodic ideas for me. Um, for some strange reason, it just works. I know it's kind of odd, um, but it's easier for me to write um, using some kind of rhythmic element as a like a bed track. <laughs> and then I just put uh, melodic elements on top of it. Uh, very strange. It's just uh, the way it works sometimes. Obviously, I have traditional ways of writing too, where I'll just pick up a guitar and and you know just kind of bang on it until there's something that comes out that's that's worthy of recording. Or you know, same thing with keyboards. But that's what I like about your approach is you seem to really just care about the creativity behind songwriting, not so much as look at me, I play guitar. You know, yeah. like I can play a million notes. Isn't that great? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I definitely don't identify. Like as a guitar player's guitar player, I mean, I just kind of yeah. use it as a tool for songwriting. I, you know, as a guitar player on my own, you know, I'm I'm not really that proficient. At the same thing with keyboards or drums or anything else. Um, You're very so, modest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, I the musical instruments are all like my focus is songwriting, and that's what I've always gravitated towards. Uh, even growing up, I didn't really learn that many cover songs or anything like that. It was I, I picked up the instrument, and the first thing I did was write songs. Um, so I I was never. I could never like impress anybody because, you know, the guy next to me would be like, oh, here, check this out. Here's a Green Day song or whatever. And, you know, I just had a bank of songs that I wrote myself that nobody knew. So nobody was really impressed with my abilities, uh, you know, growing up. I need to talk to you about Thomas Lang because having Thomas Lang show up and be a drummer is just like, so so epic i mean when thomas lang says yeah yeah i like your song man i'll do it. what was that like were you just like oh okay i'm just gonna go pinch myself now <laughs> that's that's exactly how it was i mean um you know i was honored i mean all the drummers on this record i mean they were i, I was a big fans of you know prior to me reaching out yeah yeah and not like, just thomas lang you've worked with uh, incredible talents but i just i needed to bring him up i mean particular. thomas lang for sure is one of the the shining lights on the record for sure i mean i i actually you know like i don't i i, I never talked to him uh, prior to this project um it was kind of a shot in the dark where you know i was just looking for drummers um and and i had a few guys uh and i was like well let me just shoot for the stars here and i reached out to uh, a few of my favorite drummers, uh, Thomas being one of them. Um, so I shot him a message on, I don't remember if it was Facebook or Instagram, um, some social media platform. And I was just kind of like, Hey, you know, I know you're busy. I was just wondering if you do session work. Uh, and if you do, uh, I would love to have you on this record. And I, I shot him, uh, some samples of older songs. Uh, and I, you know, asked if, if, if you like it, you know, let me know and I can, I can shoot you some of the newer, newer songs. Um, and I had, uh, I just thought, you know, I would just do it and had no, I, I'd never imagined that he would actually respond. Um, so, so I shot him that message and, uh, to no surprise, he didn't respond, you know, it was like a month later, I didn't hear anything. So I just went ahead and, and had a friend track, uh, about, four songs or so. Uh, and then, so essentially two months later, I randomly got an, an email from Thomas saying, Hey, I really, I checked out your stuff and I really, really liked it. Um, and I knew that he actually listened to it cause he kind of broke, broke it down. Uh, and he pretty much 
you know, like regurgitated everything we stand for. You know, it's like I like the progressive nature of it, but it's accessible and super melodic. And, you know, I didn't I don't even think I read the whole email because I was just like flabbergasted. I was just like, oh, my God, Thomas Lang is emailing me and he's interested in recording with me. Like I it just yeah. blew my mind. Um, so I kind of I just scurried at that point. I was like, OK, well, I've got a handful of songs. Uh, how much time do you have, essentially? Um, and he had some time open up. And I just kind of shot in the songs. Uh, we worked uh, remotely. Obviously, he was in. He's in Los Angeles. I'm in the Washington D.C. area, uh, and we just kind of communicated through email. Um, and yeah, we just shared audio files, and uh, everything he sent back to me was just out of this world, as expected, being right. that it's Thomas Lang. And um, yeah, and that's where that's how it all kind of stemmed. So pretty awesome. I'm still stoked about it. He should be. I mean, that it's just amazing to even see that him still going and still be stoked about new music and stuff. It's it's cool. It's so easy for someone like him to just start phoning it in. But yeah. He still has passion for the art form. It's really cool to see. Yeah, it's very cool. I mean, he actually sent me like, you know, there's multiple files and, and there was a click track file. And that's something he created on his own. And he's got guide tracks uh, that he's, you know, saying to himself like one two three four solo so he actually like broke down the sections um and the cool thing about it is he also sent me um video recordings of him playing to the song so right that's pretty awesome as well very awesome i i want to get into your lyrics a little bit because it seems like with schumann being about kind of the uh, sound mind a, a stillness peace of mind a lot of the lyrics are about kind of like transcending the ego and mm -hmm. meditation, finding Zen. So I just want to know how, for you, how do you find your Zen? Do you meditate? I, I do meditate. Um, it, it's just, uh, I mean, we're, <laughs> we're living in a pretty chaotic time. So like, I find that's the only thing that kind of gives me some kind of peace. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I, I practice meditation, uh, and mindfulness, um, and, you know, even though the name Schumann is calm mind, uh, a lot of what I write is more about the struggle to attain that calm mind. Right. Um, cause it's so hard to do. And I'm, you know, I'm not like a, you know, a crazy high level, you know, monk kind of meditation person, you know, I struggle uh, a lot, you know, so it's, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, letting go of the ego, um, worldly materials just kind of transcending yourself into the greater you essentially uh, a lot of that is a struggle for me so I, I write about it uh, and kind of relate it to you know our human interactions uh, you know when it comes to e even our relationships with people and places um, so I, I a lot of it's struggle based essentially <laughs> And so that's how I kind of maintain that Zen is I, I can exercise all of the, the negativity and the struggles through my lyrics. And uh, that brings me peace of mind in a sense. What advice would you give to someone who's just trying to achieve their dreams? Um, well, make sure it's something that you love doing, because sometimes people have dreams um, and they don't really have the desire to do it. <laughs> so like for me, like music is, you know, a passion of mine. Um, so I am able to continually just work on my craft and release music despite, you know, not making money off of it. Or, you know, like if I was in a desert island, I would still write and record music if I had the ability to. So for anyone who wants to achieve their dreams, I would say just, you know, pick that passion of yours and don't stop doing it no matter what, just keep doing it. Um, and if you don't hit whatever that dream is, if it's financial or some kind of like worldly gain, uh, just know that you're still doing your passion. And, and if, as long as you enjoy it, um, that's kind of living the dream in a sense. Those are wise words from someone who knows everybody. <laughs> is there anything else you'd like to say to our listeners? Um, yeah. So if you guys can, you know, check out the album it comes out September 10th, Memories and Intuition. We have two singles on our YouTube page. Uh, Memories of Water was the first single and Under the Sun is the second one. Uh, you know, give us a listen and, uh, yeah, follow us on social media. We're under the same moniker, Schumann. Uh, and it'd be great to connect. 
Awesome. I appreciate and it. And where's the easiest way for people to find you? So uh, we're on social media. Uh, you know, you could just type Schumann, S-H-U-M-A-U-N. Um, and then there's Schumann.com as well. You can find all of our links uh, directly there. So that's probably the easiest way. Can we uh, expect any more Quora tunes, Quarant tunes? Oh, um, you know, I, I want to. It's It's been really busy. Um, yeah. I got, I got married at the end of Quora. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. So we've been kind of... Uh, you know, building things up. So I, it's been hard to to get time to do it. We started um, doing, uh, I think, it was, I don't know what was the last quarantine. I think it was maybe Owner of a Lonely Heart by Yes. Or Oh, yeah. <laughs> I don't remember. And maybe it was that one. Um, but it, we started it, and I'm hoping to, to continue at some point. You've been listening to The Peach Pit. I've been talking with Farhad Hossein from the band Schumann. Their new album, Memories and Intuition, comes out on September 10th, so stay tuned. Farhad, thank you so much for taking time to talk to me, and hopefully we'll do it again in the future. Thanks again for having me. Have a good one. You too. Take care. Bye-bye.